Yeah, we think we want to move a little further into this uh, this weird Ben Affleck thing we're doing. <laughs> don't we don't, don't we totally know here. what it is. I don't know how we got here. Brunch, hit it, boys. It's Monday, and people are pissed. That's right. It, it sure is Monday. It, th- Well, we're recording it on Tuesday, but mm-hmm. everyone will be hearing this on Monday. On Monday. That's right. A little Monday behind had the quite scenes. the off-season. Mo- Monday <laughs> did have quite the off-season. We didn't. It's Monday, and people are pissed. And then right after we did It's Monday, and people are pissed, everyone was pissed. Well, I think people were – yeah, that's right. Yeah, p- I think people were pissed uh, – before Monday and people were pissed because we uh we kept delaying Monday and people were pissed yeah and then after we did Monday and people were pissed people found things to got p- to get pissed at so that's the thing we got a lot of good content for it's Monday and people are pissed so we're going to give it to you now you're getting it on a uh, Monday uh, the big one is the cinnamon toast crunch thing it's swept the nation Tuesday I was looking up which story to pull up for it. And I pulled up three stories. I want you to guess. Let's see. I'll time it. See how long it takes for you to guess. Okay. Where I'm getting this story from. Okay. Do you want? Do you want me to tell you the three places, the three outlets? Yeah, I think that's helpful. Okay. What am I gonna shoot from the hip trying to guess one of the millions? One of, places of them I think will covered? be. Th- these are all. These are heavy hitters. Okay. These are heavy hitters. You all know right. what? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna read them. And you say... I'll, like, describe what I think the outlet sort of covers. And you can take unlimited guesses. Okay. So if you really want to be a, a punk, you can be, like, the whole time you could be, like, uh, New York Times, blah, 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 okay. blah, blah. All right. First, got to find the timer on my phone. How you do that? All right. Clock. <laughs> stopwatch. I think I just set an alarm clock. Okay. Here we go. Do I start with the headline? Yes. <laughs> Well, this is unfair because you're starting the timer and you're laughing. No, I haven't started okay. yet. Do you want to guess before I've even started? This will be uh, a 5,000 points if you can guess. BuzzFeed. No. Damn it. But that was a good guess. Okay. That was a really good guess. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I hope I wasn't poisoned, dot, dot, dot. Shrimp tails, rat poo found in cereal box, three question marks. That's TMZ. I haven't even gotten to the story. TMZ. You got it. Anytime right. there's a dot, 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 it's yeah. automatically TMZ. All right. So I, I do want to go through just how differently people can tell <laughs> the same story. I haven't read these yet, but all right. Okay. 11.01 a.m. Pacific time. The guy who claims he found shrimp tails in his cinnamon toast crunch says he's going to poison control to test the black marks he says are baked into the cereal ellipses. They love that. He's afraid it might be rat droppings. Jensen Carp joined us on TMZ Live. That would have given it away. Tuesday yeah. and explained why he's never eating CTC again. I don't like the, the shorthand for cereal. It's way too close to CTE. Right. And why he hopes he dodged a bullet with Monday's bowl of cereal. See? Monday people are pissed. That's right. This is all above board. Jensen says he's make, taking matters into his own hands to get to the bottom of what was in the bottom of a cereal bag. And he's hoping General Mills investigates too because his shrimp tail claims are just the tip of the iceberg. 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. General Mills just got back to us. And it sounds <laughs> like they're saying whatever Jensen discovered here did not happen on their watch or on their grounds. A rep for GM says, while we are still... By the way, I've skipped over like 19 ellipses here. Of course. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I mean, that's me being on the internet. I know as soon as there's an ellipses, it's a TMZ article. They love that. So it says, a rep for GM says ellipses, like ellipses, ellipsis. While we're still investigating this matter... We can say with confidence that this did not occur at our facility. They add, we are waiting for the customer to send us the package to investigate further. Any consumers who notice their cereal box or bag has been tampered with, such as the clear tape that was found in this case, should contact us. Then there's a tweet from the Jensen Carp guy. Jensen Uh, Carp sounds like a replacement level reliever from from Major League Baseball. It sounds like a bad athlete, and here's why you think that. It's because uh, the Mighty Ducks gave you that idea. How so? Carp was just like one of the like randos on the team. Okay. Yeah, you don't you don't remember Carp? No. He was not invited back for D two. Okay. He was in that group. That'd be that's a good game. Can you name 
the the mighty, Jets, the mighty ducks who mighty rejects. yeah the, who were not brought back for mighty ducks two uh I think Terry Hall was not right one of the so they had the two Hall brothers Jesse and Terry and the father who was a good character because he was like the only one there the whole time that was like all of these adults seem pretty bad right <laughs> like you're teaching the kids how to cheat and how'd you get this gig again you like hockey oh, you you, you got were a DUI, DUI. Yeah. ah what was the first thing you told the kid oh that you hate them and you drove your limousine onto a pond while they were skating there? Right. So they, they, they couldn't bring that guy back. They were like, this guy's a real wet blanket. I uh, can't bring back Stop the- Stop fucking the team moms. Right, yeah. They're like, can't bring back the, the, the Hall father. For good measure, we'll also get rid of one of his kids. But yeah, Carp was one of them and uh, one of the Hall brothers. Uh, it's true, continues TMZ. Jensen did show off the cereal bags from the two-pack he says he bought at Costco, and one of them did appear to be taped up. As if already opened. He'd already said he's going back to the warehouse for clarification. But based on Mills' response here, it seems like they're blaming... Like, they're saying the blame lies elsewhere. Okay. You know, I, you know who I'm going to clear right off the bat here? General Mills? No. Jensen Carp? No. I, I'm not clearing Jensen Carp. No, definitely Could be not. in on some wrongdoing. Uh, my, the, first, the first red flag for me is that he's verified on Twitter. Uh oh. So I don't know who he is or what he does, but like, thank you very well. Oh, oh this guy with his <laughs> that, that. So if you're a I new listener, like having that. a blue check mark means that Nothing. if you tweet anything, someone can respond and say, "I guess they give that blue check mark to anyone." No one asked for it. No one wants it. And yes, they do basically give. They it to right because we have them. Um. So yeah, I I'm 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 sus on this guy, but I'm gonna clear the good name of Costco because. Costco can do no wrong in my book. Yeah, I like Costco. Uh, let's look into a little bit of uh, on J- Jensen Carp. He is, I think he's like one of the uh, a headline spouse, which I think are finally going away. You know what a headline spouse is? Just made it up. It's when someone's referred to as somebody's uh, husband. husband, partner, wife, whatever it may be. Okay. Where like they'll say like. I feel like this happens a lot where they'll do it with a woman where like mm. someone will do something great and the headline will be like Zach Ertz's wife yeah. just did this great thing yeah. and it's like you know what does Zach Ertz have a, to do with this? You want a gold medal in soccer? Right, right. <laughs> um so he is known for this potential publicity stunt but also he's uh Danielle Fischel's husband. Oh, no way. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. So he's doing Damn. Yeah. Mr. Topanga. That's right, Mr. Mr. Lawrence. He his banner cover photo on Twitter is Talking Cheap, a podcast about cameo. That sounds super cool. Okay. Even if this whole thing has been a lark and he's a jerk. Uh, right, we're gonna have to erase the first part of this podcast and we're gonna have to get that guy on for our podcast or our uh, our cameo cameo idea. Yes. Really bounce some ideas off him. Not liking his Twitter bio, he says, uh, "Father, writer, only person to d- debate at Oxford and perform at the gathering of the Juggalos." All right, whatever. There, who cares? Talk about uh, talking cheap podcast. Buy my memoir. Kanye West owes me three hundred dollars. I don't like that. That is treading on uh, Jeff territory. That's right. Jeff uh, still is owed fifty thousand dollars from Jay Z. Yes, that was a great, Incredible great, bit. great tumbler. Yes. Here's the next one. Cinnamon Toast Crunch Shrimp? Comedian believes his box of General Mills cereal contains shrimp tails. The lead is, Cinnamon Toast Crunch with a side of shrimp? That sounds like a porch's read. (laughs) Writer and comedian Jensen Karp believes his box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch contained a few shrimp tails, he tweeted Monday. His post went viral and has been retweeted more than 11,500 times. Okay, I gotta guess. Yep. The Daily Mail. No. Kind of close, though. Kind of close. Um... As a Tuesday afternoon with some sharing stories of what they have found in product over the years. The Sun. Nope. Fuck. It's one of those like tabloid. It isn't. It isn't. It's not? No. It's a publication. uh, A a print publication, but like anything else, far more commonly read online. Uh, The General Mills. People? Nope. 
General Mills cereal responded to Carp's tweet saying it appeared to be an accumulation of cinnamon sugar and that there was no possibility of cross-contamination with shrimp, but Carp isn't buying it and responded that after further investigation with my eyes, these are cinnamon toast, these are cinnamon coated shrimp tails, you weirdos. I wasn't all that mad until you just now tried to gaslight me, question mark? Uh, Rolling Stone. USA Today. Oh, it was close. I had it was today something that writes things. And oh, then yeah, then he tweeted this. All right, yeah, he's like, he's enjoying it a bit too much, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He did. Uh, did you see this one? This picture he tweeted. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, I look like this giant shrimp after eating your stuff. You've right. been a little silly. Le- leave the comedy to the big boys. Right, right. L- l- listen, l- save the comedy for the cameo podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's a good. That's a really good idea. I think that a lot of cameo content is is funny. And always interesting. Did I tell you my friends and I were doing a thing? Because Chris Forsberg does a thing where his friends will text each other in the group text. They'll say, this person. And people guess what their cameo price is. Oh, that's a good That's a good bit. I was like, yo, I want to steal that for brunch. And you can come on and be like, you can like host a game show we do or something. But c- because we're using that. So yeah, that's, a if, good, if, that's a great idea. If, I'm if you, down for that. If you want to be part of it when we steal it, then maybe I'll be able to sleep better at night. But... <laughs> That thing is, like, consider yourself the McDonald's brothers. <laughs> right, because it's ours now. You are talking to Ray Kroc right now. <laughs> that is all, a really good idea. And it legitimately came from him just explaining, like, hey, my friends and I do this. And I was like, ah. Mine now. This is mine? <laughs> Very good. This cool. is. Um, all right. Uh, the USA Today. Yeah, that was USA a, Today. Little, I, I like TMZ's better. All right. The, well, here's the last one. Comedian finds shrimp tails in his cinnamon toast crunch. Internet explodes. Ah, it's morning time. Ah, oh, this this man. You you are going to guess incorrectly, but I won't I won't blame you for your guess based on the first like three words of this lead. I know what kind of thing this is going to be. Ah, it's morning and time to pour a nice bowl of sweet cinnamon toast crunch. But then, what's that? Is it a sugar cluster? A misguided square? No. It's a shrimp tail, an empty shrimp tail coated in toasty bits. At least that's what Jensen Karp, the Los Angeles-based comedian, writer, and dad claims he discovered Monday. Along with the shellfish remains that somehow swam into his box of cereal, Karp claims to also find little black specks resembling rat droppings and some green pea-sized thing. Uh, I was going to say bar stool, but then there's like too much description in there. So it's didn't that make formal. you think The Ringer? Yeah, I like, was like five words it, into that lead, it, and I was like, "This is this is very ringery." <laughs> so basically, like exactly what I just described. It's like barstool, but way too many descriptions. Right. So barstool is long-winded. Yes, I was gonna. I, I I haven't read enough barstool blogs in my day, but my idea of it is that it's generally short, right? It's just reactions to like actual other news things is what I what I used to read it. Okay, so I'll... Like a, it, here's uh, two paragraphs from this article. Here's a reaction to it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, the the ringer is kind of the opposite, where they're like... And people read it, and they, they mess with it, but here's they're like, how do we... Here's a four-page description on what happened and, like, two sentences of reaction to it. Right, uh, right. It'll be very long description of what happened, and then, like, I'm here for it. Right. Or, like, <laughs> are, are, are we here for it? Something like that. I don't know. So that's the cinnamon toast crunch thing. This Wait, guy. What was the last one? Oh, that was uh, where was it? It was the Ringer. <laughs> no, just kidding. It was um, yeah, uh, today dot com. So we had USA Today and Today dot com. Yeah, it's a big day so for it's today. Just international today. St- yeah, it's international today day. Stonks it's today and people are pissed. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's kind of how the the world goes these days. Yeah. You see, you see how everyone can get all hot and bothered. Um. Yeah, the uh, do you so do you believe this guy? Um, I'm skeptical. I don't I don't know if I think that he's lying. It's a really, really random thing to lie about. It's a lot of effort. The whole thing that he put in parentheses, not a bit when he tweet or like not a joke. Like uh, that sounds like it would be a joke. Mm -hmm. My first exposure to this was the. Lights, camera, podcast guys so tweeted funny. out. What movie did they say was in there? Uh, I I forget. 
They're on a heater today with uh a with the shit random, posts. A very random shit post. A very random DVD case. <laughs> yeah, but did you see the other thing they did? No. So they uh they did um at CT Squares. Why is there a DVD oh, yeah, copy of 2015's I mean. yeah. Mordecai in my cereal? <laughs> yeah. This is not a bit. They also went viral for um where is it? Shoot. Uh they tweeted out oh a screen grab saying yo this is wild and it's the oh, net yeah. worth thing <laughs> did i talk about that trick. last week no my friends and i are huge on that these days what googling net worth we'll throw out a net worth and i always wondered why is net worth or feet always the autocomplete on every celebrity who really cares about either of those things and unfortunately we know the answer to the latter but like who's googling net worth yeah now it's all i do okay um my twitch chat pointed out this to me like last week google pete blackburn's salary Really? Yes, do it. Uh oh. It's hilarious. He's at seven point five million for the next five <laughs> seasons, which would bring him to thirty two to thirty three years old when it ends. But it's like, not terrible. <laughs> but like those Google snippet things where it's like, here is the answer provided by Google. You don't have to click any links. If you Google Pete Blackburn's salary, it shows in big letters at the top of the Google search seven point five million because it like took it from a thing that I was talking about, like a hockey player, and it just, like, connected one, two and two, and it was like, Pete Blackburn makes $7.5 million. It's very funny. Hell yeah. I do wonder how accurate, though. Like, how accurate can those things be? Well, I... Like, d- clearly not accurate. Not if, very accurate. If I they, will tell you that. I mean, that's easily double what you're making. That yeah, <laughs> right. That is double what you're, what you're making. It's a classic DJ theft joke. Uh, it don't make half of that in a year. I, I I love the I don't make that in a year thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I stole that from you. Yeah. I, although people say that. I just more say it when it's like so and so signed like number. Right. So like Dak Prescott signed like a, a three hundred five million dollar contract and huge deal. I don't make I don't make that, that right. I don't make that in a year. Uh we got a read today. Look at that. We Wash do boys coming through. I do wanna th- I before we get to the read, I wanna get uh I wanna get Brett on the podcast. Okay. He's the uh, He's the washed guy, our liaison, hooks up everything. I think that we should get uh, bread on sandwiches. Bread on sandwiches. I like that idea. To I hope you've been brainstorming because we've got uh, we've got Will. Yep. We've also got Dave. I definitely want to have Will on to talk about Will. Like Will. Like, the will to survive, like, all these different <laughs> okay. things. Like, not people's wills or whatever. Mm-hmm. Just talk about what what pushes him along when he's having a a, a rough day. How he gets through everything. Okay. It would be very cool to have Dave on. I got to check with Dave. It looks like Dave maybe shaved his mustache. What? If so, going to have a talk Excuse with him me. about that. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should get... We should, I mean, I would like to, for, to keep this series going. Love to have Randy on. Randy's an interesting character. Yeah. Figure Let's out see. Figure out what those guys are all about. Um, but yes, we have a read. Brett got us a read. Brett got us a bunch of reads. So, uh, prepare yourselves because the reads are coming. Are we, what are we, a a woodwind section? Because we've got reads. Sucking down these reads. Yeah. I think that's why I never played the, uh, the saxophone. The whole read thing? Yes. Yeah, that really weirds me out. Just, just really, like, when... They, when they were like introdu- when I was in uh, elementary school, I believe maybe like third, fourth grade, and they inter- started introducing like, "Hey, you, you want to start want to start playing some instruments?" They did like showcases. They were like, hey, "Here's a trumpet. Here's how a trumpet works. Maybe you'd like to play this. Maybe you'd like to play the clarinet." And when they were like a clarinet demonstration, they're like, "This is the reed. You got to really get in there." Clarinet is like, that is not such for me. a dope in- instrument, and they just did not do a good enough job of selling kids on wanting to play it. And you know who else didn't do a good job of selling kids on wanting to play it? Who? SpongeBob SquarePants. Really? Do they? Because Squidward plays the clarinet, and Squidward's a fucking loser. Really? Yeah. Man, well, a lot of great songs have clarinet. A lot of you, a lot of Klezmer has clarinet in it. Um, the reed thing and the spit valve thing are things that confuse me because I think a lot of people didn't play certain instruments because they were like spit valve that's gross and then like within three years we're carrying around 
Gatorade bottles full of their (laughs) own spit because they dip and they think that that is not disgusting. Yeah, I uh, I played the uh, the trumpet for like two years and the the spit valve was involved in that. Was this pre or post uh, Bega? Um. I could see there being a huge guess, spike. I would guess post. Yeah, I could see there being a huge spike in But I don't think there was any popularity. relation there. Uh, I think really? That, yeah, I think that there was a, a general interest in playing one of those instruments, and I looked at the trumpet, and I was like, that thing's only got three little buttons. It seems easy enough. I'll go with that one. You know what's cool about trumpet, too? Is I, Have you ever seen a trumpet player with bad posture? I haven't. Every time someone's playing I a trumpet. I quit, because look at this are, thing. It's fucking horrible. But man, trumpet players always look incredible when they're playing the trumpet. It's so yeah, right. majestic. Like they, they've shoulders got are incredible. Right. back. It's like a, they're like boxers, except yeah, they're. I think I got like you know how they do like the scoliosis tests in yeah. middle school. I I think that they I did the scoliosis test and they were like failed. Give me your fucking trumpet. You're done. I think that if they did the scoliosis test like one week after I took it, whatever time in my life it was, they would have been like, oh, he definitely has scoliosis. I think it's you just hit the one window. <laughs> yeah, I was just like having a good day or something. I have such bad posture. I went to um, a boxing class a while ago, and afterwards, the instructor was like, "Hey, you uh, you you got to do something about like you you the way you stand." And I was like, "I know, I do." And he was like, "No, like serious." He was like, "You're probably gonna be like, oh yeah, I have bad posture." And I was like, "Yeah, I, I do." He was like, "Do stuff about it, man. Like you you just can't be." She can't be having like a round back. You're gross. They did that Didn't to say me. That, they but... said you got to do something about the way you stand. And I and I was like, okay, I'll just I'll just sit down for the rest of my life. <laughs> right. All right. Then uh, All right. <laughs> the, I, sounds good, man. You, you f- face a little adversity in standing, so you <laughs> right. quit standing. Uh, um, today's re uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Ballsy. We don't love to talk about our balls all that much on this podcast. Not really our thing, but we we're are more big. We're more hygiene guys. Well, that's right. That's what I was just going to get to. Yeah. We are big on guys taking care of themselves and not being disgusting human beings. Right. So uh, knowing what we know about the hygienic tendencies of the uh, the male species. Kind of gross. Usually a uh, lot of cut in corners. Three in one shampoos, conditioners, body washes. Get the hell out of here. Horrible. Yeah. Awful. Stop being gross. Start giving your uh, the individual parts of your body. The attention that they deserve. And that's where Ballsy comes in. Ballsy offers a full line of male hygiene products, including their infamous Ball Guard Ball Deodorant. It's a liquid powder that reduces sweat, irritation, and odor, and all the places where you do not want those things. Quickly dries as a mess-free powder and goes on with a nice cooling sensation. Uh, They've also got freshening sprays, balms, and cologne, like Nut Rub. Uh, the, The names are a little laughable. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Careful. It's a, no, this no, no. First read. I know. Watch. I know. It's a tough product to talk about seriously. To hawk without using certain terms, and it's a difficult thing to navigate. Where like, what do we call this that you put on this area? Don't hear the names as sophomoric or anything like that. Like these are ju- the, these are what they're called. This right. is these are the names of the products and seriously these are men's hygiene products. Right. And again, and they're the, good and they work. The names are a little laughable, but uh I can confirm that the products are pretty great. Yes, I agree. They, they sent a uh, they sent us care packages and I'm genuinely a big fan. Uh they have a body wash that has like charcoal mm-hmm. things in it. Oh yeah. Very very good. Liked it a lot. Uh, also really liked the uh, the cologne, like the beeswax cologne. Yes. You, it's like ba- beeswax. You rub it on your neck a little bit. Smells fantastic. I had the uh, – they send you the the ocean and air one, or they send you a different one because there, there's a few different ones. I got ocean and air. I got ocean and air, and it's yeah. fantastic. Uh, more importantly, Ellen loves it. Ellen laughed at, at the, the care package a little bit. I used it, and Ellen was like, holy crap. You smell great. So again, like just don't don't be weird about it, everybody. Right. Like just don't be weird about it's a hygiene. Good, it's a good product and it's a very useful product, especially with the weather getting warmer. The weather weather getting warmer, you're exactly. gonna get sweat in places that you don't want sweat. So get ballsy, get their their ball deodorant, get the entire line. 
all very good products. Uh, do not find yourself a victim of the gross summer sweat in places that you do not want. Go to BallsyBrand.com. That's B-A-L-L-S-Y Brand.com. Again, I'll say it because I messed it up the first time. B-A-L-L-S-Y Brand.com. And start treating your family jewels like royalty. That's a good tagline. That's a, that's a very good tagline. Okay. Very cool. People are also pissed about the Dr. Oz thing. Dr. Oz hosted Jeopardy, and I'm pissed because we thought we went through everyone who could possibly host <laughs> right. Jeopardy. Have we gotten any of those right, by the way? No, I won't. Didn't we? I feel like we ended up just talking about like Big Bird a lot. I was or literally or Ronald say, I'm McDonald. Pretty sure, pretty sure we decided that Big Bird should host Jeopardy, and that hasn't happened yet. No Big Bird yet. Um, Really, just mainly concerned with what ended up happening to Ronald McDonald. That's right. Who haven't would been, replace? Hasn't been heard from in years. I still don't think we've gotten an answer on that. Nope. You ended up like a month later. You were like, random thought. What happened to Ronald McDonald? And I was like, this is a random thought because like we just talked about this because nothing has happened to Ronald McDonald. And you were like, huh? What happened to that guy? So if you got any Ronald McDonald updates? Tell you what, he's not hosting Jeopardy because they got Doctor Oz and people were pissed i'm not even gonna read a story i'll just tell you what the story was uh, disappointed that i won't be watching jeopardy for the first time in a long time tweeted one user can't believe they're bringing on this guy he's a snake oil salesman he does this he does that that puts our antennas up because we are anti-snake oil big time we no gas station supplements either we don't like gas station supplements we don't like snake oil although i don't know as i become more compassionate in my old age i do kind of feel bad for snake oil it get, like everyone hates it. Everyone definitely hates it, but no one's ever said a nice thing about snake oil. What if that ends up? What if that was like? We're gonna find out. That's the fourth COVID vaccination, gonna, and it's the most effective say, one. Yeah, there's just like a COVID. It's like the cure to COVID. Right. They're like, well, which, well, Johnson Johnson does this one. Pfizer does this one. Uh, the snake oil does it, except there's no pain, and also you can't get any diseases ever for the rest of your life. And uh, your your posture is fixed, and you're <laughs> handsome. It's also very good for the mind. It's very relaxing. Just helps you play the clarinet like a, right. like a king. Gives you free weed, like whatever you might need or whatever. <laughs> it's just like the, snake oil is the solution. It's a genie in a bottle. <laughs> that'd be the, the weirdest. That'd be the funniest like uh, perk of something. That's just like free weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hear him out. People used to say stuff like that. They'd be like, this costs $100? Oh, geez. Well, I better do my homework, too, or something like that. <laughs> better come with free weed. Right, right. I don't know. Do people pay for weed anymore? I don't know. It's no, we're, legal we're, now. We're cool guys. People just give it to us. It's That's right. person offered it to us one time, and we were like, ha very cool. No thanks, though. <laughs> We don't. Uh, no we thanks. don't. No don't. We're losers. Yeah, we don't swing that way. <laughs> like I'm, as I'm wearing a dare shirt. I saw you wearing that shirt before, and I was like, "Is that that just making shirt?" Yeah, that says dare. Yeah, Keep it's not, it it's a- not like the federal booty instructor. <laughs> <laughs> or the female federal booty instructor. federal body inspector or <laughs> yeah, yeah, female body inspector. That's what it is at the mall kiosk. Oh, you think they still sell those? It seems like a thing that wouldn't happen anymore in 2021. I mean, it just it just makes you lame. Right. Again, I mean, who, like, it, it never made you cool. Like, even in, like, 1995, pretty sure people were walking around with those, and people were like, what a fucking loser. Right. Yeah. Really, really stupid. So everyone's mad that Dr. Oz was hosting Jeopardy, and I'll tell you what, I didn't know that Dr. Oz was a quack or a snake oil salesman or all these things that he was being accused of being. Apparently, he's just, like, a fake doctor who doesn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, like, I just assume all those people are, are fake doc, Like, Dr. Phil, fake doctor. Okay. Like, uh, Dr. Oz, definitely fake doctor. I mean, maybe some of these people are doctors. I, I, I'm i never going to look into it. I don't care. And I think that, that if Dr. Oz is a quack, I, he's got me perfectly. Where just like, I'm not paying enough attention to him right. to know the bad stuff that he's doing. Like, But like, would you, would you like... Would you take any of his advice? Probably not. No, I don't right. take my... You don't take a real doctor's advice. I right. sit down with... I, I, I haven't in a while, but like... I've sat down with doctors who have been like, you need to go easy on yourself. You got to be nicer to yourself. You got to do this. You got to consider this. You got to consider this, blah, blah, blah. And that doctor tells me you need to be doing th- these things. You're this like, doctor do that know? is specifically in that moment to help me. <laughs> and I don't listen. Right. And I don't listen to that doctor. 
So I'm probably not going to listen to a doctor that is on TV speaking to everybody. Right. This this is like this like vague thing. I don't want some like Taylor Swift doctor who's just doing kind of low hanging fruit for ev- that everybody can basically like get out of here. Um, but like I I was kind of the same way with the my pillow guy until the my pillow guy got all so in our face. He could have just right. existed being a just weirdo being for rich, right. He could have just been like a rich bad guy without me knowing that right. forever. And then he started going on TV shows and stuff. And then I started seeing it. And I was Same like, yo, Papa you screwed John's, yourself, man. man. Papa John's, man. Just like, just hide in the background. Make a ton of money. Right. I. Uh, Who are these people that are like, I am making so much money. I need to be a celebrity. I need to be in front of a camera. And even though I'm like a horrible person, so learn more about me. I drove by, speaking of Papa John's, I drove by on the way here an old Papa Gino's. And there's there's one near you, and I drove by it, and I saw that the sign, it still had like a deal up on the board thing. Mm-hmm. It said like, "Hey, five free pizzas for whatever we get, get a pizza with, with, with a bunch of salt on it, <laughs> free weed." And I was like, "Man, they never took that down." And then I what, looked has, like, inside, and it was not a close. It was an active Papaginos. It was the Papaginos that was like happening. Yeah, I think Papaginos still exist, don't they? I thought that Papaginos was. I thought uh, you were talking about Papa John's. No, I I thought that Papaginos was in the kind of friendlies world no, where there's like six of them in the country. But if you drive by one, there's it's like a it's like an amusement park basically. Yeah, it's like a relic. It's like uh, honestly, I think it's just a lot of places that have red signs with white lettering. It's, it's like a, if you drive by a Circuit City. You're like, oh, yeah, that's been closed forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, watch out, Santander Bank. <laughs> <laughs> they are... You're next. Yeah, they're coming for, for you. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that, that they were still active in business. I was there, like, I, there's one right by my my uh, my mom's house. Uh, Honestly, I was going home the other the other weekend, and I drove by it, and I saw that it was open. Oh, yeah, like, that's a, yeah, at Waltham Mass. That's it's yeah, a classic. That's like a staple. Yeah, I've been there many times. Yeah, a lot of a lot of like post uh, soccer, post baseball pizza parties at that place. Yeah, because that used to be near the Wallex. Oh yeah, and so like hand in hand, you get like a birthday party lunch at at Papa Gino's, then go to the Wallex for little activities. Have you ever had a place that you go, like as a chain or like a big story store that is in your life in some way shape or form just shutter itself in the blink of an eye like were you inconvenient uh, we we saw it coming with toys r us and circuit city they gave us a big heads up like hey mm-hmm. for the next over the course of the next year we're going to have a going out of business sale but we're like i don't think either of us were rattled by sears um the one that i could think of um was like eb games back in oh, the day yeah. eb games there was electronics an, boutique yeah there was an eb games right near my house and i used to get all my video games from there and then like just one day not there yeah but that was right around the time that uh maybe it was maybe it wasn't i i found a way to, to get around it whether it was like ordering them on amazon or online or like just going to the best buy in burlington or something like that but it, it it was it was uh pretty devastating and and I just blindsided me, but then I put think they put their a GameStop there like a year later. There was a store called Daddy's Junkie Music that was a it was like Guitar Center but a little smaller and it was like fifty fifty new stuff used stuff. If you wanted to sell anything, that was your place. And they did a no heads up. Today we're closed thing, and oh, no. that sucked. And I didn't have any – at any given time, I could be packing between $100 and $300 in – Your savings account? Like, yeah, in, <laughs> like, store credit or gift certificates to Guitar Center. Yeah. And I was like, what happens to the people who – what if you had, like, a ton of store yeah. credit at that place and it just closes? You're – Toast. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, you cinnamon I do toast about crunch. That. This is a this is a different answer to like the 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 prompt that you gave, but uh, I think I talked about this on the podcast. The McDonald's near my house closed randomly, uh, like uh, very suddenly, maybe like 
two, three years ago, and that rocked my world. How does a McDonald's ever close? Right. Like, what does it take for a McDonald's to not get enough business where they're like, we got to get out of here? Right. And then the next day you see they're going, giving Travis Scott $300 jillion. <laughs> and uh, who is the other guy? I forget. There was the... I, we don't even remember. They did a follow-up thing, and he had a, like a... I think he had a better meal than Travis Scott did. I don't know. Yeah, but I, it's just like... I just assume that anywhere McDonald and McDonald's goes, it's just going to kill it. Mm-hmm. It's like a Dunkin' Donuts. Like, where are you going to put a Dunkin' Donuts that people aren't going to just flock to? It right. could be next to a Dunkin' Donuts, and both of them are going to do super well. Right. I pulled a uh, I pulled a real Ben Affleck today, by the way. I pulled a real Affleck. Go on. Driving. And, you know, there's a bunch of other cars on the road. Nice day. Some people walk and everything. I'm driving. And uh, there's a Dunkin' Donuts coming up. And I'm like, oh, man. I love Dunkin'. This, this is, now I've seen the Dunkin' Donuts. I'm, I'm a Boston guy. <laughs> like, what am I going to do here? And <laughs> I ended up going. I got a, uh, a medium black iced coffee. I've, st- I've got... I've got it right here, and <laughs> I did the drive through everything. It was awesome. It was so the you, you pulled an Affleck, and that just means going to Duncan. Yeah, I just got that something. Rules. Yeah, I just got <laughs> something. Yeah. Right, Ben Affleck over here, <laughs> and I was I, I only in Boston. I, I got it. They did the exchange. They, they I gave the card. They swiped it. Like, how you doing today? And I was like, oh my god. Oh, I look, feel like ben. this is such a cliche. Ben. We're, Ben would laugh at this. Uh, I'm taking the left turn after as I'm leaving. I see all the cars are driving by and everything. I'm like, oh, my God, they must think. What What? what are these cars thinking as they pass me right now? They're like, ah, oh, he couldn't resist. <laughs> he just had to do it. And honestly, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Look, I was being I was, I was being a little goofy, but I'm glad I went, man. Dunkin Donuts. I got the I got it right here. Got to have my Duncan. Got the ice in it, got the straw, your straw with the purple line <laughs> on both sides. The whole thing. I'm I'm, I'm like get like my classic Ben. I'm like blushing talking about this, but yeah, it was a real Ben Affleck move. <laughs> uh <laughs> put we, in the cup holder. We've discussed but the, we've it's been been floated yeah we think we the wanna, idea of a of an affleck week yeah we think we want to move a little further into this uh <laughs> this weird ben affleck thing we're doing we don't, we don't we totally know here. what it is i don't know how we got here but like it's just a very basic like hey ben affleck exists isn't yeah but isn't like, that cool ben affleck is just i feel like ben affleck has existed for a long time but now but we can make him our jonah hill you know that's a let's elevate him right we can be like and I, everyone already does this like ben affleck spotted doing this ben affleck spotted this. Oh my. there's podcasts asking what they're going to do about ben affleck the whole nine i think that's why i want in on affleck so bad is that like the guy can't go anywhere or do anything he's just doing normal stuff and people are like get a load of this guy let's start i mean my plan was today to be wearing a bts shirt mm-hmm. let's start when pictures of him come up with the Dunkin' Donuts and everything, let's just, like, peep his wardrobe and, like, start dressing like him. Affleck fits? Right, just doing stuff like when... going to have to do a lot of, like, Sully's t-shirts. Right. For, uh, he owns the Believe, Believe in Boston. Boston. <laughs> he owns the Believe in Boston shirts. Uh, I By the way, I don't know if I should do anything with it, but I do currently have the exclusively in Boston Twitter account. No way. I don't know what if we I'm gonna do way anything too with it. Many Twitter accounts for our own good. We yeah. also acquired a uh, Porch's official. Oh right, right. You want to check out Porch's official? <laughs> yeah. Have we done we, any tweets there? I don't think we've tweeted from it, but there is a hilarious ba- uh, um, banner background of just a bunch of inflatable minions. So did I? Let me see. Um, I I don't even think I've made the. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I do. I follow Porsche's official. Oh, there's we got three followers. Oh shit! Nice. Look at that. Nice. Did did we tweet about it or did they just find no, it? No, I think some people might have just found it. Very cool. Which is kind of creepy, but so, I'm into it. So I haven't done anything with 
the exclusively in Boston thing other than here's the here's the cover photo. <laughs> Just the planet Earth. Yeah. I think that that <laughs> most stuff if I do anything with it will be um stuff about Earth, you know. <laughs> I love that. But all these people pissed. This is why folks got to start taking baths. Got to start taking baths. I looked up today. I, I've just become a bath guy recently. I'm like two weeks into it, and I was like, I'm ready to talk about it, ready to start sharing my truth. And I looked up. I was like, why am I missing? Like, why is it that the whole guys taking baths thing has been like a no-no over the years? Like, what's is is am I missing something? Is there's something wrong with it? And I looked it up, and. Uh, Someone asked on Reddit, they were like, hey, like I'm a guy who takes baths. Am, am I, I missing asshole? something? Like, am I right? And everyone was like, yeah, dudes are just like really weird. They, they like associate relaxing. Right. They, they associate like relaxing with being soft and shit. I was like, oh, okay. Well, then I'm definitely fine with that. Right. Who wouldn't want to relax? Right? You, I think. Right. That's, pro- that's probably true. I'm, but. I've been, I've, I started doing it for like, you, I need to have designated time where I just stop and breathe for a few seconds. And I've been into it. I've been doing not every day. That'd be the dream. Hoping to work my way up, but it's great. I got stuff that I, I got the stuff to put in it and everything. First time I did it with bubbles, had to text a friend who I know is a bath head and be like, awkward question. Taking a bath, been in it for a little while. There's all this stuff going. There's all these bubbles and everything. What do I do? And she was like, take a bath. <laughs> and I take was a like, bath to wash off the bath? Right. And I was like, but I'm, but I'm uh, so what, what if I'm done? Like, what, what, what do I do when I'm done? And she's like, this stuff goes away. The bath, the bath works it, when you're done. That's what I think. It's so cool. It's like a candle. You just get in there, and it just kind of it gets smaller. The and then eventually you're like, okay, well, I'm I'm still gonna have a few bubbles on me when I get out of here. Then you just get out. And you got some bubbles on you, and uh, that's kind of it. And uh, if you got hair my length, the back of your hair is gonna be wet, but you can use it as like a way to kind of freshen up your hair for the evening. You mansplaining baths to me? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you got a little... It, it's a good time. I would recommend it. You know what you are now? What's that? A bath time, shithead. Bath time, shithead. We should get The Rock on. The Rock responded to my tweet about bath time, shithead. Remember that? No. Yeah. I tweeted, I was like, Baywatch was dope. Bath time, shithead. Classic line. And then he quote tweeted it with like, we're going to be saying that one forever. Really? Or like, we're going to be laughing about that one for a long time, like at Baywatch movie. And I was like, oh, The Rock, what you're so cool. I lo- Man, yeah, The Rock's great. but Not as cool as Ben Affleck. Not as cool as Ben Affleck. But um, so far, I would recommend the bath thing. And it's just a nice way of Unfortunately, my, cooling, uh, cooling off. Don't really have a have a good bath situation here at this house, uh, which is unfortunate. So, what's the rules on going to your your pal's house to take a bath? I mean, if you so if you walk in my bathroom and you see there's a bath mat and like there's not a shower curtain over that bath, you could be like, "Hey, uh, how how would you say you wouldn't say like, do you mind? What would you say?" You're like, hey, is uh, is this open? <laughs> <laughs> is this open for business? Uh, uh. Also, just f- gonna gonna press the retweet button as hard as possible when the brunch out of context account just one day posts. What are the rules on going to your pal's house to take a bath? I mean, if they're like, hey, hey, if they're like, hey, I got a new bath. <laughs> You want to come take this baby? Right, right. You go go in there, take it for a spin. I'm gonna block off what? Like I, I tried, I tried watching an episode of Ted Lasso in the bath 
Because I was like, that you should be in various activities in the bath. You getting adventurous in there? So I asked my I asked one of my friends. I was like, what do you do in the bath? And they were like, do whatever you want. You can just sit there and do nothing. You can put on some music. Um, they were like, if you're done for the day, don't have any work to do, want to do, have a drink, have a drink, do get a stoned, like do whatever you need. Just relax, chill out. Honestly, they're like, this sounds counterproductive, but if, if you want to catch up on texts, you want to do stuff on your phone, I was like, eh. That seems like it would ruin the, uh, right. ruin the re- relaxation part of it. But I'll tell you, I've done that. I've, br- I've brought the phone to the to the bath, and it's... It does seem nice, because then you can keep the, uh, keep the hands dry. Yeah, that's a tough thing. That's a tough thing. You don't want to... You don't want to move around too much. You don't want to do the splish splash, taking a bath. I don't think that song is necessarily a positive song when they're saying splish splash. I was taking a bath. It's an absolute mess. Yeah, I think that's geared more towards kids that are like not there to relax. They're kind of just there to like it's, it's fucking party time in the I, bath for kids. I don't think it. I don't know if that was a kid song. I think that it was ended up being targeted towards kids. Oh, it's a novelty rock song. Uh you think it was performed by Bobby like Darren. Contemporary adults. I think they're just talking about like, yo, like I was just taking a bath. Like that's <laughs> all we're saying. Let's see. It's a sick story. You got time to tell it again. Okay, this is true. So I win. No way. It was written with DJ Murray the K, who bet that Darren could not write a song that began with the words "splish splash." I was taking a bath. <laughs> taken. T A K I N. So they were like, you can't even say I was taking a bath. <laughs> you got to say splish splash. I was taking a bath. That sounds like a story I told you recently yep. about Paul McCartney wrote one of my favorite wing songs, Picasso's famous last words. He and Dustin, Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, he and Dustin Hoffman having dinner, and Dustin Hoffman was like, "Yo, so you can just write a song about anything?" And he was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "And you can do it on the spot?" He's like, "Yeah." So then after the dinner. They are, he grabbed a magazine, f- opened it up to a random page, and it was an article about Picasso's last words. And he was like, all right, write a song about this article. And on the spot, he wrote the song, Picasso's Last Words, which I loved before I even knew that story. Mm-hmm. I like I love that song. And then, I don't know, over time you realize that Wikipedia exists and things that you've loved forever you don't know everything about, but you could have. Like, you know everything about stuff as it comes out now because everything's just coming at you in real time. But there's stuff that you could have liked 20 years ago that you're like, now I can learn about it on Wikipedia, that kind of thing. And my mind was blown by the fact that he wrote that in a second. But, I mean, if you're like uh, Bobby Darren or Paul McCartney, you can just do that. Do you know that Adam Duritz sang backup vocals on uh, Sixth Avenue Heartache? On The the Difference by the Wallflowers. Yes, I did know that. Uh Dylan versus Dylan was the Smash best. Success. Dylan versus Dylan was the I thought it was going to be really good, it ended up being way better than I thought. The the ones that we ended up going with early on. So if you haven't listened, uh shout out the Patreon people. Patreon slash patreon.com slash listen to brunch. You get the bonus episodes on Fridays. We did it with Dylan from Washed Circling Back. And we were gonna have him talk about various Dylan things. And then maybe some like random ones that actually weren't about Dylan. And instead we just did all the ones that had nothing to do with Dylan. And he was unbelievably confused, but played along and it was a blast. I honestly, I I was like, this is so good. I feel bad just having it on Patreon, but it it is what it is. It is what it is. Those are the rules. We didn't make them. (laughs) It's right. You can't, can't stop the content train. He was, yeah, he was super cool. I, I am looking forward to getting the other guys on. Mm-hmm. You think, uh, who do you think we should do next? Will? I'm I'm eager to see the uh, the introduction between you and Will. I think Will and I are going to be homies. I think so until you're not. Really? Like, does like, Will make I enemies? I don't I don't know if he makes enemies, but I think that like you two have a lot of similarities. That I'm waiting for the, I think it's going to be like a honeymoon phase, and then there's going to be a real clash and a real comeback down to earth. There's only going to be but room I'm very in this town excited. for the, yeah, I'm very not ex- enough room for the two of us. Right. I'm very excited to find out what the, uh, what like causes the divorce. Interesting. 
So we're already say like, why won't DJ and Will get along? That's interesting to me because when I watch their clips and listen to their podcast, I'm like, these are funny dudes. These are like, I'd, I'd be friends with these dudes. Um, yeah, like I, I love the one clip of them doing the 1940s gangster. <laughs> you see? Right. <laughs> Which, I mean, that is, that shows that those guys are legit. That That's a topic and a bit that has been done right uh, driven into the ground but they still make it funny. right like th- <laughs> they did an airline peanuts joke yeah, you right. know like yeah. that's that's unbelievable i watched that clip on a loop like <laughs> so funny. instagram did the like <laughs> are you the still shirts? watching thing or i don't know if they're shirts yet but they should be shirts i saw the, the art the of the three of them so good yeah that's amazing yeah he did i mean all of them did the voice as well but his he he really sold me mm-hmm. although dave with the mustache that worked too. Yeah, but now the mustache is gone, so Dave is canceled. If he did get rid of the mustache, he'd be a little bummed, but who knows? Let's give him a spin with uh, no facial hair. So let's see. People are pissed. Baths. Uh, I think music's back. I don't what? know if we have time for that, but I think music is back. How so? I've just been listening to more new music than I usually do, and also a lot of old music. And uh, Yeah, you sent me a lot. Uh, you've been in on natalie merchant i don't know what to do man also I am... you sent me one of those the, uh you sent me that song um what is it uh vineyard what, nights uh, yeah that's right um <laughs> no what's the natalie merchant song like the, the big one wonder wonder yes uh i listen to that song and it's just it's one of those songs where you like totally forget that that song ever existed and you play it and you're like it just brings you back in time that's there song... are a few of those and like i would say that I would say like the the top one of those songs is like Torn, where you forget Torn exists, mm-hmm. and then you listen to Torn, and you're like, "Fuck, this song was like the biggest shit in the '90s." So like my OG music take as a young as a young little boy was Torn isn't that good. That's I was bad take. I know I was Torn the rules. I was like, "Hey, let's relax about Torn." We got a lot of Dust Brothers produced music happening right now, and I think it's time we give Hanson their proper due. Okay. Let's relax on Torn, and please, if you would all, I don't know, maybe I was like a, a, a sexist, like, eight-year-old, but I was like, if you would just please focus on the Hanson boys and Beck, <laughs> whose last name is also Hanson, not to be confusing, but Torn, not that good. Actually, no, I, there's no way that I was uh, being uh, sexist because I was a big Natalie Merchant guy. I was all the way in on Natalie Merchant. I'm talking with 10,000 Maniacs, after she left 10,000 Maniacs, when she left 10,000 Maniacs, and 10,000 Maniacs did a cover of More Than This with a new singer, I was like, even this is good. I was like, I'm just a Maniacs guy. I'm a Maniac. Maniac, for, maniac. I'm a Maniac for the Maniacs. I went back on this Natalie Merchant kick and watched some 10,000 Maniacs performances, and I was like, who else was in that band? I was like, I remembered it being Natalie Merchant, who was like a young woman, and then just like a bunch of dudes, and by dudes I mean like um, Matt's band from a, a teacher. Oh, so like it was yeah. like a bunch like some like doctors, a yeah, bunch of like uh, side gig kind of guys, right? Like th- like thirty five to forty year old dudes, rockers. right? Which I mean, not not definitely not knocking them. They had a great career, but I was like, I watched it and I was like. Yeah, I did remember that right. These are like a bunch <laughs> of ball did dudes. These guys and, get this gig. Right. They, they so they were a band. I looked it up. They were a band and they just like needed a singer and one of them knew like this young person and they were like, "Hey, do do we want a, a young person in the band? Like do we like add a kid?" And I think she was like a teenager or something and they were like, "Yeah, like she's good. Whatever. She's in the band." And they made a few albums, and then after a little bit, people were like, yeah, this is a good band. You guys are good. You're awesome. Very cool. Also, uh, you want to you wanna quit the band and <laughs> do a let's let's do a solo album? Yeah. For, let's get you a solo album. So they gave her – so Natalie Merchant – I was blown away by, by this. Natalie Merchant self-produced her – solo debut and just like assembled this small band didn't use a bunch of studio people actually she used the rhythm section of the wallflowers the bass player and the drummer i think were from the wallflowers and then this 
insane guitarist, Jen Turner, who I didn't know of until I went back and listened to this album recently, I was like, why didn't the world stop for this guitar playing? I was like, yeah, if I John Mayer and, did this a few years later, to Wonder, I was like, holy fuck. Just fucking shredding the whole song. <laughs> right? I was like, this was on, this is unheard of. I was like, who is doing this back then? Like saying, just saying, hey, like, and go ahead, Natalie shred Merchant this entire, this. right? Just hey, I'm gonna sing this kind of like, just completely, this kind of like me on my own song, right? I'm gonna do this uplifting song with this great message, and you. Just go nuts on it. Steal go crazy. Absolutely. And that track is the freaking best. That is it's such really a good. So, you know what? Shouts out. I, I did an Instagram post uh, playing some of Wonder. And I was like, yo, shout out Natalie Merchant, the producer, for what you just said. Like, hey, play over me this whole song. Yeah, just kick me off stage. Like, even Santana shuts up for... A couple seconds. <laughs> right? And this, yeah. Right, so go go back, watch performances. Awesome. Awesome. Natalie Merchant is uh is is the goat, man. Another big uh, another big one for like the I forgot this song existed, but it defined my nineties was uh Why Can't I by Liz Fair. Yes. I've been putting that on the Zoom playlist. I bet a lot of people have forgotten that that song exists. And yeah. if they ever heard it, they'd be like, Yo, what is this song and who's it by? A little vulgar. A little vulgar, a little, little uh, graphic, not graphic, vulgar. I had it right. What uh? Da, ba, da, 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 uh wait, let me get there. We haven't fucked yet, and we're oh, gonna yeah. go swimming. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> Even like now, I'm like, what does that gonna, mean? Taking a you, bath. You can swim before I think. I don't know. What date well, is swimming? I, I don't know. <laughs> Which date is swimming? George Costanza would beg to differ. You don't want to go swimming before. Before you do the deed. That guy was you terrified. Think you think that song is about shrinkage? Maybe. I don't know. Just like, who cares about that stuff, man? People people so uptight. Just take a bath, man. Take just a bath and slap some, some ball deodorant on. Just and cool off. Get in the bath. Get in there. 